Ian Charnas is a director and co-founder of Sears Thinkbox, a seven-story makerspace and innovation center at Case Western Reserve University that is free and open to the public. He graduated from Case Western with degrees in both computer and mechanical engineering. His personal work blends art and technology in creatively themed exhibits and group projects, including the world's largest twin musical Tesla coils, a real-life Mario Kart, and a waterfall swing. Ian and his work have been featured on Gizmodo, Make Magazine, Wired, Forbes, NPR, NBC, ABC, Popular Mechanics, Boing Boing, Add a Fruit, Pitchfork, and Hackaday. He aims to inspire creativity and the belief that you can do anything. Obviously, you've had a lot of projects, a lot of endeavors here. Have you faced any adversity or setbacks during any of these? And how have you dealt with that? Sure. Um, we, uh, we face, if, if we don't face setbacks, you're not doing anything of great merit, <laughs> right? Um, so there's, there's regular everyday setbacks where we, we log what happened in our, our journals or our lab notebooks, or however you keep your notes, um, so that they're kind of solidified and, and they don't evaporate out of the back of your head um, through our, our failable human memory. Um, but there's larger setbacks where an entire project fails, uh, or where you decide, you know what, this project is no longer uh, worth doing. Um, I, I recently was watching uh, Zach Friedman. He's a, an electrical engineer YouTuber. He'd actually make a great uh, interviewee uh, for this. And, I'm um, such a fan of his. Yep. He had a, a really good uh, uh, litmus test for when you should give up on a project. Um, it's hard. It's hard to give up on a project. It's sort of, it feels like admitting a personal failure. Um, and yet, you know, at, at smart companies like Google, they'll tell you to fail fast and fail often. Uh, fail as soon as you can so that you can uh, get over the project and get onto one that, that has a, a better uh, success uh, potential. Um, but it's still very difficult to give up a project. It makes it feel like I failed rather than uh, this ended up not being a good idea. It's hard to decouple the idea uh, from your sort of like personal pride, uh, you know, or if you have, if you have a, a pretty high work ethic, it's hard to decouple not finishing a project. It's hard to do that. And so he has a really cool litmus test he uses to determine when to jettison a project. He said, if somebody, if somebody took this project and, and dumped it on your desk and said, hey, I, I don't want to finish this. Do you want to finish it? Right. And you take you take a look and you see, OK, there's a couple hundred dollars of materials here. This person maybe invested five years of their time, but that wasn't my time. Right. That wasn't my money. So I'm being asked now looking forward, you know, not spending, uh, not tossing bad money after good, not tossing bad time after good time. But now looking forward, is it worth continuing? And I think that really helps decouple it because it, it depersonalizes it. It's not about me and my will to get things done and do a good job and work hard and, and try to be proud of my work. It's about whether this project is really worth continuing. Um, so that's a really cool litmus test. Um, I think the, the biggest um, loops <laughs> uh, that, that I have gone through uh, on these projects that we've gone over would be one thing we tried to do with the Tesla Orchestra. Um, we wanted to audition for America's Got Talent. There was a musical Tesla Coil group that, that got on the show. Um, I think they, they lost after the second round. But we had, some, we had some new ideas. We had new skits. We had new things we were doing with the Tesla Coils that were entertaining that we wanted to share with people. Um, and so we um, were trying to film an audition tape of this magic trick um, that we uh, had made involving a, a system that our one team member had built that flies props around a stage um, by invisible wire. And it was very cool. And we had a, a, a curtain uh, made of CO2. And we had all of these cool sort of science-y magic, magical illusions. Um, and we had just a month to film it before we were gonna get the boot from our, our rehearsal space. And we, we worked as hard as we possibly could. There was no, no erg of energy that was not spent um, in pursuit of, of finishing this. And yet when, when the deadline came up, we fell just short. Um, we got things working. We tried to film, they broke. We fixed them. We tried to film again, they broke. And uh, it, it became, it was the day before we had to give up the space. It was, well, it was the day of, it was 5 a.m. And we were just devastated um, that we had put so much time and so many resources 
into our, our, our mystic cube illusion, we called it, and it didn't work. Uh, and it was hard to accept, especially because we had to wake up in three hours and start disassembling everything uh, while feeling that way. But one of the things that, that buoyed me through it was um, the idea that you don't, you don't win all the time. Um, and if you can only uh, accept the outcome or if you can only get through life uh, by winning every single time, it, it's going to be not as rich of a life uh, as you can get through. So, um, you know, having experiences like that helps you empathize with someone else when they're going through a project that, that failed at the end, despite their best effort, despite their best talent, and to say, um, you know what, we, were, we, we can't win all the time. We, 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 we didn't win that particular project. We didn't finish it. It didn't work, um, but we will persevere.